Now, forgiveness is is actually not just mercy. It's related to mercy. That forgiveness has to do with a special kind of case. Um, forgiveness has to do with where an injury has been done. You have been hurt. And to forgive means to release the intention to pay back. To release the intention to pay back. And when I forgive someone, that's what I do. Now, we need to go over it slowly. I don't stop hurting. I may, there might be a miracle, I might do it immediately, it may be in time I would do that, but I will not stop hurting. Pretty certainly, I will not stop hurting immediately. Uh, I need help with that. Um, but uh, so often when you are involved in situations where forgiveness uh, is appropriate, uh, you see people wanting the person to stop hurting because it makes them feel guilty. And they would like not to feel guilty any longer because it's very painful. And so they want this person that they've injured to stop hurting. Don't try to stop hurting. When you forgive, if you try to stop hurting, it will confuse you so much that you will not be able to forgive. You can decide not to pay back. You can decide that. And with God's help, you can carry through with it. Let me make two more points and try to remember, and I'll come right back to you. Forgiveness does not mean to forget. And people who say to forgive is to forget are just trying to manipulate you. They'd like you to forget. Uh, it would be easier on them because, you see, they're having to come to terms with what they have done. And you can almost say that they need not to forget. They need not to forget. Now, the third thing I have to say to you about what forgiveness is not is, is a little more complicated, but perhaps even more important. Forgiveness does not mean I behave toward the person I forgive just as I did before he did what was wrong. I'll say it again. Forgiveness does not mean that I behave toward the person that I forgive, just as I did before they did what was wrong. So, for example, suppose you've been in a business partnership and someone has really brutally hurt you. Now, my decision not to enter into a partnership with that person again does not mean I haven't forgiven them. It does mean I now know more about what they're like, and it is not wise for me to enter into those kinds of relationship with them, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else. So those three things are extremely important now. And with the latter one, you may have some times where you have a hard time sorting it out. But the key is always, am I doing this to make them suffer because of what they did to me? If you're doing it to make them suffer because of what they did to you, that's unforgiveness. If you're not, it's not. No. I um, hope I haven't talked you out of your comment. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, that's exactly right. 
uh, as is so often the case now, when we uh, are living in the kingdom of God, we have to enter the act knowing we can't do it. And it's in the act that we know the power of God to accomplish it, which is what that beautifully illustrates. And I've heard that story and thought about it often, and I just understand so, I mean, how could she even extend her hand? Uh, but that's what you do. You do what you can to bring to pass the power of God flowing through you. And it is a miracle. But that's the kind of life we're supposed to be leading anyway. It is a life that is out of the natural. And that's where we learn how to do that. And if we've had a son or a daughter or a brother or sister uh, who has hurt us so badly and in the process of hurting us, uh, perhaps they have revealed themselves to be terrible persons. How many of you know that nice people have terrible relatives? <laughs> I, I, I don't mean just unlikable, but they often are morally awful. And that revelation is can just be overwhelming. And to live with that without unforgiveness is very supernatural. Yes. Well, uh, let me run you through a few steps with that, okay? Because I suspect for many people that, in fact, they are, uh, they need to clear up a number of issues. For example, many people think that they haven't forgiven themselves for something if they re still regret it. Regretting something is not the same thing as unforgiveness. I, I when I think of my past uh, sins, I regret them terribly. I feel ashamed of them. I say at one breath, how could you have done that? And the next breath I say, I know all too well how you could have done that. Because I know who you are. Right? Now, remember that to not forgive yourself is a matter of inflicting punishment on yourself for what you have done in the past. Now this is a crucial matter because there's a lot of talk about not forgiving yourself and so on. So remember that this doesn't mean the same thing as remembering what you did. That's not unforgiveness. It's not the same thing as regretting that you did it. That's not unforgiveness even feeling sick that you did it. That's not unforgiveness. If you hurt yourself because of what you have done in the past, you are unforgiving. I have a feeling that many times when people talk about not forgiving themselves, they really just wish they could forget it. And that might be a good thing and it would be worth praying for that. But in general, I don't think you're going to forget it, but that is not unforgiveness. So let's, I think we ought to just take time to go over those three things again, because I, I find them so problematic for, for all of us. Uh, unforgiveness uh, doesn't, or, or when, when I forgive, that doesn't mean that I forget. I'm sorry, the first thing I stated, or stated, I'll try to state them in the same order. It would be a miracle if I do, but the first thing I said was, to, to forgive doesn't mean that you stop hurting. Secondly, to forgive does not mean that you forget. Thirdly, to forgive does not mean that you treat the person exactly in the same way that you treated them before they injured you or did wrong. And now what, what I would encourage you to do is to apply that to yourself. 
No, I, when I do, when I, I, you know, I thought I was going to mature, and then I wouldn't have any more, I thought it would, you know, I wouldn't have any more problems. So I get past all this stuff, and, but I find that I just keep changing. And I have temptations of, of various kinds of uh, vanity and pride in comparison to others and uh, uh, various kinds of temptations as, as I go through the stages of life. Now what I've learned is that if I fall to one of those temptations, I cannot treat myself after that the same way that I did before because I now know what I am capable of and I must take steps to prevent that. That's not unforgiveness. That's just smart. Once you figure out how you can fail, then stay out of the temptation from there on, you know. Deal with the issues. So it's just very important to understand that when we speak of unforgivingness, we are talking about punishing people for what they've done. Sometimes that's a matter of bringing it up over and over, okay? And so sometimes when people say, I, you know, if you forgave me, you'd forget it, what they really mean is if you had forgiven me, you would be needling me about it all. That's right, you don't. In fact, it may be the... You don't have to do that. That's right. You just have to say the word mm -hmm. forgiveness and feel Right. You and, and ask God to be with you and help you carry through with them and all of that. But see, that comes under the heading of you. that doesn't mean you're going to treat them as you did before they wronged you. Because the appropriate thing to do in many cases is if if not just totally not stay in the relationship, at least change that relationship appropriately. It's, uh, it's, this is very important in, in uh, marriage divorce situations. Because I often have to tell people who come to me, I'm just going to sever this relationship. No, you'll never sever that relationship. You can change that one, but you can't sever it. <laughs> it's not quite as hard as divorcing a child, but you just never, so you change it. You change it appropriately. And now remember that that is wisdom because one of the things that you will find is if you don't change it, you'll be drawn back into it harmfully and uh, you will not be able to forgive because you'll be under such pressure and all the past things will be brought up by what the person is continuing to do and you'll just be cooked. Yes? Reminds me of a saying that comes up to me when this comes up, and that is you can't keep the birds of the air from flying over your head, but you can keep them from making a nest in your beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's right. And, uh, and with reference to these unforgiving, you need to say that more loudly. She said, she said, you can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your beard. <laughs> and in this regard, uh, you have to learn how to pass things on. And with reference to forgiveness specifically, the thought will return. The memory will return. The realization will return. That's the point at which if you are forgiving, you will simply shoo them on. You will not welcome them brood over them, and that sort of thing. And all of us, I think, have been injured, and those thoughts and those memories will return. And uh, that's certainly true for, for me. I, um, and when they return, you have to decide not to dwell on them. So much less build a birdhouse for them. <laughs> Was there someone else uh, I overlooked? Yes. 
is a childhood question. Hmm. Uh, in our family, as little children, we would get into fights or something, and the instructions from the grown-ups were, now you ask for forgiveness and mm -hmm. say you're sorry, and then you're supposed to hug and things okay. Um, it was never retaught really that forgiveness wasn't that whole action yeah. that you go on. So what you're saying today is new information, but for Good. me it is, a little late. <laughs> no, no. Let, but let's 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 make use of this. You seem to have held up pretty well in spite of it. But, but you would have been better off if you'd had it. But now let's use it to 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 make a little teaching here. See what happens is parents want a behavioral outcome. And they force this, mm -hmm. and they turn it into a legalism, exactly. mm -hmm. which means that you you can go through the routine and not forgive. Of course, you could also forgive and not go through the routine. Right. So we have to think that through. Uh, our problem is that in social groups, families, churches, schools, communities, we do need a certain level of behavior. And so those in authority are apt to press that button, but that doesn't help us on the inside. And so we don't understand what forgiveness really amounts to and how to be forgiving and merciful. And it, uh, it leads to a lot of hypocrisy and pretense. <laughs> sure. Right. What do you? Uh, what kind of response do you encourage from them? And because we can't make them feel sorry right. or remorseful for something. Right. What would you say? You have to. Uh, what you say is so important, uh, and you have to make sure you don't try to make them feel something, because that will force them into hiding, and they will learn how to pretend, and they will continue to boil on the inside. So you would teach them particular strategies about behavior. Like, for example, you might, uh, after, you, you have to give time to the child, yourself. You have to be kind of a buffer. Uh, there used to be a commercial where it showed the, some sort of anti-acid going into the stomach and gobbling up acid droplets. And uh, that's what we are, really, in our world. We, we sort of go around and gobble up these acid droplets because they won't hurt us. And so that means for children we have to give them time. But then we have to teach them. We have to teach them how to respond. We teach them the futility of getting involved in punishing behaviors and how much good surprise, surprising kindnesses will do. And elicit the, them uh, or involve them in a conspiracy of kindness towards their sibling and say after a while you've had your you know you sit down and you have cookies and milk with them or you do something whatever is necessary after a while you say well let's do something good for him what would, what would really surprise him and so you get the child learning to overcome evil with good that requires teaching because they have to understand that's conceptual. And a lot of what we do as Christians is conceptual work, and, and we really must never uh, forget that. It's conceptual work. See, legalism forces us into screwy thinking. That means thinking that doesn't work, that is not connected to reality, uh, and we need to really understand that the conceptualization has to be right. So why are we doing something good to Grace. Teach the child about mercy. Let them know how often they have received mercy. Let them learn to enjoy mercy. And that's that's how we would work there. Like teaching them the joy that comes from blessing. Absolutely right. I do think that God gives us that. There is a great Indeed. 
That's right. And then you can share that with the child. They'll understand that at a very early age. But it's most important that you lead them into the experience of it because spiritual things are learned by experience. You can talk to them about joy forever, but until they begin to experience it, it isn't going to work. So that's why you have to have the time of, you have to establish a context of peace. That will come from you by God's grace. That may involve things like uh, replanning how you spend your time, making sure you get enough sleep. It's incredible how exhaustion affects the family life. But see, all of those things have to be, and then we establish the context of peace, and then we can begin to teach. And the child can begin to learn that punishing behavior is a bitter thing to everyone involved. I often, you know, people will say to me, well, it's, Bertrand Russell has this great passage in which he says, well, it would be wonderful to love your enemies, but of course it's impossible. It isn't impossible. It's easier to love your enemies than it is to hate them. The glandular grind is very different if you love your enemies than if you hate them. It's a very different experience. So we have to teach people how to move into that. It is much better, much easier to love your enemies. You have to know where to get the love, but it's much easier to love your enemies than it is to hate them. Let's take a little break because I think my machine here is going down or something. So.